Well, welcome everyone and um, thank you for joining us for the launch of uh, Outer's uh, webinar for the Internet Governance Roadmap. Um, I'm Michael Lewis, um, Outer's Industry Relations Manager. I'd like to start by acknowledging the traditional custodians of the land that I'm coming to you from today, uh, the original home of the Wondery and Wudurong people of the Eastern Kulin Nation. I'd like to pay my respects to Elders past and present. Um, I'd also like to acknowledge that Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples were the first people to innovate and use technology on this land and uh, do so over many millennia, knowledge upon which we build on today. Um, please note that today's session has been recorded. Today we're joined by our Internet Governance and Policy Director Jordan Carter and uh, Specialist Policy Advisor Annalise Williams. Um, Annalise and Jordan have both uh, worked on the, the roadmap that we're launching today, um, which is part of our contribution to the global Internet Governance discussion. Um, actively engaging in champion, championing uh, multi-stakeholder internet governance discussions and uh, participating in events is a core function of uh, outer terms of endorsement and a uh, strategic focus area of, of ours. Um, so we're really pleased to launch this uh, roadmap today. Um, we welcome your feedback and questions on the roadmap. Um, so please uh, feel free to send through any um, through the Zoom Q&A. Uh, and we'll come to them uh, uh, further in the webinar. But uh, to kick things off, I'm going to hand over to Annalise. Uh, thanks, Michael, and um, thank you, everybody, for making time in your calendars to um, join us at this launch. Uh, so the, the Internet Governance Roadmap is the, the result of many months of thinking and talking to people um, both here in Australia and people overseas, and we're really pleased to be launching it today. Uh, so I'll just briefly run through the agenda just so that you know what to expect. Um, if Sorry, Annalise, you've muted yourself. <laughs> Sorry, I've gone back on mute somehow. Um, so we'll uh, be starting with just a bit of context and background um, and explain why we've developed the roadmap. Uh, and then we'll sort of go through some of the uh, highlights and, and next steps. And then, um, of course, at the end, there'll be an opportunity uh, for you to share your thoughts and impressions as we go. Uh, next slide, please. So first, uh, some scene setting. So for this roadmap, uh, when, when we talk about internet governance, we mean the system of institutions and processes that coordinate uh, discussions and sometimes make decisions on issues relating to the underlying technologies of the internet. And currently, uh, governments, uh, civil society, the private sector and the technical community all participate in these uh, discussions and decisions. And this multi-stakeholder governance system has underpinned the success of the internet, contributing to global innovation and, and economic growth. But there is increasing pressure on this governance system. The idea of uh, multi-stakeholder itself is contested, uh, and um, many governments would prefer a model where they have the final say. So as the strategic and economic importance of the internet has increased, so have the debates about how it should be governed. And these debates are sort of increasingly influenced by um, geopolitics and, and the world is very different today compared to 20 or 30 years ago when many of these internet governance institutions and processes were established. Uh, and added to this, there is now a, a vast range of new global public policy issues associated with the increased use of the internet. So things like privacy or harmful content and misinformation, as well as the impact of um, new technologies like um, uh, AI and blockchain. So we're now facing really complex challenges that the current internet governance institutions and processes weren't designed to address. And the next few years will be critical for the future governance model for the internet and for technology more broadly. Uh, there are several intergovernmental processes coming up that could significantly change the multi-stakeholder nature of the governance system. Um, so these include the, the Summit for the Future in 2024, which is an initiative of the United Nations Secretary General. 
uh, and the, the purpose of the summit is for what's well, meant to enhance member state cooperation and on critical challenges and to reinvigorate the global multilateral system. And the Secretary General considers digital transformation to be one of these critical challenges. Uh, he's, called, uh, he's called it one of the two seismic shifts that will shape the 21st century, uh, and the other one is climate change. So it is a, a, a big issue that um, uh, we'll have a lot of focus in the next coming, uh, next coming years. So during the summit, member states will agree on a, uh, well, they're expected to agree on a new global digital compact. And we published some blogs on, on the GDC um, previously, and perhaps we can pop the link in the chat um, in a moment. Uh, but the purpose of the, the GDC is to um, outline shared principles for the digital future. Another important process is the 20 year review of the World Summit on the Information Society um, that will be taking place in 2025. Um, so the, the first WISIS uh, back in 2003 and 2005 was a significant milestone in internet governance because um, that was when member states formally recognised a role for non-government stakeholders in internet governance. And another uh, key outcome of that, that first WISIS process was the creation of the Global Internet Governance Forum. And the IGF was established as a, a platform for discussing internet policy matters, um, but it doesn't make decisions and its mandate expires in 2025. So at this stage, we don't know whether it's going to be renewed. Um, these are really important conversations and processes um, that are, are coming up and we'd really like the, the internet technical community to be uh, galvanized and prepared to respond, but we're, we're not seeing the, the coordination that we'd like to see um, and that we think is necessary, uh, which brings me to my next point. The next slide, thanks, Mike. Um, so why an internet governance roadmap? So, Outer is absolutely committed to the multi-stakeholder approach. We think having all the relevant stakeholders involved is the best way of ensuring that um, we have an open, free, secure, and globally interoperable internet. Um, and as my, Michael mentioned at the start, supporting and sustaining multi-stakeholder internet governance is a key area of, of focus for us. So we've developed this strategy um, to provide some concrete ideas for improving and evolving uh, the current internet governance system. And we, this is you know, our contribution to the global conversations that will be taking place in the lead up to the, to the GDC and the WISIS review. And we're hoping that this roadmap will um, help spark debate and uh, inspire others to, to think about these issues and to share their positions. We're, we're happy to have our ideas challenged by others. Um, and if, if better ideas emerge from these discussions, then we'd be happy to get behind those. Um, you know, the, this roadmap is really just uh, our way of saying to the community that we're ready to work with others to evolve the internet governance system, because we think that the multi-stakeholder way is worth preserving. Uh, and with that, I'll pass over to Jordan to, to talk about some of what's in the roadmap. Uh, brilliant. Thank you, Annalise, and good morning, everyone. Uh, it's great to be joining you today to talk about this. Um, I'm going to run through the first three uh, areas of the roadmap with you, uh, or first two, something like that. Um, We've covered five areas in it, and the reason we chose them was either that the topics are ones that keep coming up in discussion, uh, or they're not coming up in discussion, and we'd like to promote or um, instigate some conversations about them. Um, we've talked about shared principles to shape the internet governance system. Um, we are talking about the broader and deeper cooperation and participation. Um, particularly among the communities, regions, uh, social groups, stakeholder groups that have not been so engaged with internet governance. Um, we are uh, floating an idea about setting some goals to guide the work of the internet governance system uh, that would link it in a, in a suitable way to the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals or SDGs. 
Um, we want to see a big step up in leadership from the technical community um, in the internet governance and digital governance policy debates. Um, and uh, we think there are ideas um, that need to be considered for institutional innovation and development in this area, um, both among the existing internet governance institutions and uh, possibly some new ones that we may need to build. So we'll work through a little bit more detail in each of those um, uh, and the calls to action that are that we've made in each um, before coming to a discussion where we're looking for some feedback and stuff. Please feel welcome to use the um, Q&A pod uh, as we go, and uh, we will do the reveal of giving you a link to the actual roadmap um, after we've finished the run through. So you pay attention to what we're saying rather than uh, then I off to, to read the document. Um, if we could go to the next slide, please, Mike. Um, the first one is shared principles. Um, there are quite a lot of sets of principles out there about how internet governance should work or what it should cover. Um, uh, uh, various internet governance processes have generated these in the past. They're a perennial topic at the Internet Governance Forum. Um, but one that we found ourselves coming back to a bit is um, the Net Mundial um, uh, Multi Stakeholder Declaration from 2014. Um, I don't know if you have read that document or if you have, whether you've done so recently, but if you go back and look at it, um, there are both principles about internet governance and a roadmap for its evolution. Um, and there are some interesting ideas in there that seem still of interest and to still provide a foundation that um, was generated through a genuinely multi-stakeholder process. You know, anyone who was there might remember the composition of a drafting committee to put the statement together. And also that in the room, there were simply four queues for four stakeholder groups and the, the hosts were taking speakers one by one across those groups. So it was an open dialogue uh, in a sense and one that was genuinely multi-stakeholder driven. Um, and so the principles in there do provide a bit of an ongoing roadmap for internet governance evolution. One of the things that called for was the transition of responsibility for the IANA functions within ICANN away from um, the US government contractual relationship and putting them on a multi-stakeholder footing. That's the thing that's had the most evident progress and been completed since Net Mundial was done. But we think um, it would be worth uh, evolving those principles and doing some work together to create a stronger framework for how internet governance should work, what the, the expectations we have for the system are. And that should be done um, in a multi-stakeholder way. It isn't something that we think governments should determine uh, by themselves through a United Nations process like the GDC. Um, so one of our calls to action is to do that work on principles and a framework. Uh, and another is that the community should actually work together to convene a Net Mundial Plus 10 event sometime in the first half of next year, 2024. Um, both to do that work on evolving the principles and the framework for internet governance, but also because the things coming down the road that Annalise has talked about, um, the Global Digital Compact, the WSIS Plus 20 review, they aren't multi-stakeholder processes. They, they privilege the views of governments and often to have meaningful input, the only way is to be a governmental delegation or to be associated with it. So as well as doing work on principles, if we want to gather the multi-stakeholder community to have a say on the future of internet governance and to contribute to the future of digital governance, we're going to have to organize something to do that because the UN processes won't provide it. They might consult with us. They might uh, um, have forums where we can share views, but it isn't a genuine co-creation. So that's, that's one of the things that we're putting on the table to suggest and would love your feedback about. We move on to the second area, next slide. Um, there's the point about broader participation. Um, you know, the internet governance system in theory is inclusive and uh, anyone can get involved and participate. And whether that's through decision-making bodies like um, ICANN as an example, or discussion-focused uh, bodies like the IGF. Um, but participation isn't um, well distributed always in these forums. Um, there's a bit of a Western bias um, and uh, there's a lack of participation in some areas from uh, either stakeholder groups, so sometimes business and government are a bit light in some of the discussion forums as an example. 
Um, and sometimes small island states in our Pacific region, for example, are absent or can't permit the resources to participate. Um, there's a, a gender bias towards men in the participation. And there are two sort of risks from that. One is that the genuine outcomes of these processes are worse through lacking those um, perspectives. And the legitimacy of the whole system is less as well if it's seen as a closed shop, if it's seen as something that's dominated by Western or commercial interests. So we think there needs to be some real heavy lifting done um, about genuine capacity building that gives people the tools and the resources to both participate directly in regional and global internet governance work, um, and also to uh, make that sustainable back within their national and regional communities as well. You know, Addis um, put some resources where its mouth is on this in terms of um, hosting this year's Asia Pacific Regional IGF and providing support to the Pacific IGF uh, for um, uh, fellowships so people can attend and participate. Um, but there's much more to do, not just for us and other CCTLD uh, registries in the region, but for everyone involved in the internet community to really do that. And for governments um, and the business sector as well to do so. Um, that's one concrete thing that can be done to help genuinely broaden participation and engagement in this internet governance system. Uh, and with that, I'll turn it back to Annalise for the next few. Thanks, Jordan. Um, so goals to set direction. While the internet is uh, recognised as a, a critical enabler of the sustainable development goals, there's, there's no real connection between the SDGs and, and the goals for the global internet governance system. Um, and there's, there's very little understanding of the internet governance system itself outside of the relatively few people who follow the internet governance debates closely or participate in, in the processes. So we think um, that, you know, work on developing some common goals that um, are, are explicitly connected to the SDGs might be a useful way of, um, you know, elevating the importance of uh, the internet and technology and its governance processes, um, as well as, you know, we think articulating uh, shared objectives could help to shape the future of the internet um, itself and better support uh, sustainable development um, it could also, uh, we think, help ensure that the characteristics that have supported um, an open, free, secure and globally interoperable internet are retained uh, into the future. And the, the shared principles that Jordan mentioned uh, just before could help support the development of these goals. Um, and you know, we think this discussion um, you know, in a multi-stakeholder forum like Net Mundial or, or the IGF or um, some, some multi-stakeholder um, way of having these discussions could help also close the, and developing the goals could help um, close the gap between uh, the public policy, um, public, well, between public policy and digital technology, I guess, um, and then just ensuring that uh, they develop in a way that um, serves the, the the public more effectively. Um, so, our call to action on this point is to um, have those conversations and see if we can agree on some goals to guide the development of, of the internet uh, and the, the digital sector more broadly in a way that supports achieving the SDGs. Um, so perhaps you know, these discussions could happen um, at an IGF uh, or, or a Net Mundial or some other existing multi-stakeholder process. Um, next slide, please. This one brings us to technical community leadership, which is a critical um, part of the roadmap. Um, uh, we feel the technical community has the expertise to be um, taking a lead role and uh, you know, leading community discussions on some of these important issues. It's the technical community that is focused on the continued operation of the internet and they have the 
um, expertise to really be usefully contributing and providing advice on some of the um, on the potential implications on the operational um, aspects of the internet of any proposed policy changes or uh, you know regulatory changes. So we really need them to be involved and helping to shape the global debate, not only on the future of internet governance, but on the broader digital policy challenges. And we think it's um, really critical that they, they step up and have, have the voice heard now, because if we don't, um, there is a risk that the technology technical community will be um, sidelined from these discussions altogether. Um, Jordan mentioned earlier that uh, these processes that are taking place, they're, they're intergovernmental processes, um, they're not multi-stakeholder and, uh, you know, if, if the technical community doesn't sort of um, make its voice heard now, there is a, a risk uh, that that they that they will become sort of or be seen as as less important to the processes um, already. The legitimacy of uh, the technical community as a distinct stakeholder group is being questioned in in some quarters in these um, UN processes. Some are considering technical stakeholders to be just um, a, a subset of civil society. Uh, and we think that's not the, the way to go. We think, um, you know, the, 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 they are a unique and distinct stakeholder group uh, and should be considered um, should be considered as such. And we think, um, you know, stepping up and playing a leadership role is something that they can do and the technical community has done in the past. Uh, we saw that sort of in, in 2013, following the, the Snowden revelations, um, the, the leaders of the of several key technical infrastructure organisations got together and signed a joint statement um, it called, the, called the Montevideo Statement, which um, highlighted the need for ongoing efforts to address the internet governance challenges. Um, and it's called for the globalization of ICANN and IANA. Um, and uh, with the IANA stewardship transition completed in 2016, um, we think it's it's time to focus now on the other parts of the, the Montevideo statement about evolving um, multi-stakeholder cooperation. And the IANA stewardship transition itself can be, um, you know, held up as a, an example of what can be achieved when, um, when the community gets together and, you know, thoroughly undertakes multi-stakeholder collaboration. So our call to action here is for renewed cooperation and collaboration among the internet organisations and among the technical community. Um, this would you know, really help um, enable the sharing of, of insights to support the global digital and internet governance um, discussions. Uh, and it would you know, go some way to uh, making sure that the technical community continues to be recognised as a distinct and essential stakeholder group. So we're also, um, part of this, we're calling for uh, the development of an interface, perhaps within or maybe alongside the Internet Governance Forum. Um, and through, through this, the technical, technical community would be able to contribute meaningfully to, uh, to the broader digital policy dialogues. Um, back to Jordan. I'm not sure if you wanted to say anything else on technical um, community leadership, Jordan. Or... Um, just to say that I guess it's a choice that needs to be made. Um, you know, the intensity of collaboration and interaction between key organizations that marked the creation of the, um, net, the Montevideo statement isn't apparent today. Um, and partly I think the, the, there's a need for us all to think about and consider the seriousness of these UN processes that are going on, because I don't think anyone should be in any doubt that um, the world's governance system is under investigation by member states of the UN um, through the GDC. And um, if you were going to take a look at how the world is governed and how policy is made across the whole sphere of human endeavor, you would definitely include digital technology in that governance system. So we can't take for granted that things will just stay as they are. 
um, and shaping them um, in a positive way requires people to engage. Um, so I just said, you know, it's kind of reiterating what you said, I think, in Luis. Um, and there's a bit of a segue to, um, to this fifth point around institutional innovation. Um, Annalise has talked about that interface that we uh, mentioned in the last section uh, to help bring internet technology perspectives into the broader digital policy debate in a structured and open way. Um, there's need to keep improving our existing institutions that deal with aspects of internet governance, whether it's doing things like um, improving ICANN's uh, transparency and accountability or the, the pace and effectiveness of its policy development processes. Um, as an example, or whether it's continuing to refine and evolve the model behind the IGF as another example. Um, and I think there's also a need, we, we argue in the, in the roadmap that there's also a need to not try and overwhelm the existing internet governance structures with all of the broad concerns of digital governance. You know, um, a possibly ridiculous example is you wouldn't want to see AI and its impact on the economy as a topic at an ICANN meeting. Um, there may be things that there need to be new collaborations of stakeholders to properly solve um, where there aren't institutions today. And our view is that the internet governance model of bringing stakeholders together and creating consensus or decision-making institutions to drive uh, durable um, workable outcomes is a model that can be applied to some of these new technology challenges or newer technology challenges that the world is facing. Um, so what we are not doing is saying that the framework of internet governance, that the system is perfect. We think there needs to be improvements to it and improvements to the way it contributes to that broader global digital policy dialogue. Um, if we can go to the next slide, that, that's taken us through the five, um, the five sort of critical things, and there's more detail and context in the document. I think it's a 12 or a 13 page read. Um, our next steps are that we'll be sharing it um, widely. Um, we would love to hear what you think about any or all of the proposals that uh, we've talked about today, um, straight off the bat, shortly in the Q&A or um, uh, in, a, in a more uh, gently paced fashion. Um, you can flick us an email at, at internet.governance at outer email address. Um, we, part of the reason we did this is to try and encourage debate and to encourage other people to do something similar, whether it's just a quick blog post or whether you get on your social media platform um, uh, or whether you want to hold a round table or um, any of these things. The more stakeholders who are thinking about these issues and getting involved in the discussion, uh, the better. Um, and of course, there are some local upcoming internet governance dialogues where these topics are on the agenda, um, whether it's net thing on Monday the 28th uh, of August or the regional IGF that's happening just after that, both in Brisbane. Mike's gonna talk a bit more about those events shortly. Um, but we would love to hear your thoughts and we would love you to share your thoughts and we'd love you to agree with us and share our thoughts more broadly. And we'd love you to disagree with us and tell us why, because this is not, um, this is a contribution to the thinking and the dialogue that we all need to have. Um, and it doesn't come just from us sitting around a whiteboard and, chat it and charting it up either. Um, uh, this has been sort of deeply discussed and considered within ADA among our team, but it's also absolutely the product of discussion and dialogue and conversations with stakeholders here in Australia uh, and more broadly through the various regional and global forums that we have. So um, if you see any of your thinking reflected in here, uh, awesome. Um, and if you have an idea that isn't, uh, tell us. Um, and thank you so much for the generosity of dialogue and discussion that has been part of this process. Um, I think I'm gonna hand over to Mike to wrap up. Um, oh no, we're not actually, we're gonna take um, some questions and so on. So if you wanna ask a question, um, uh, I think you can use the Q&A pod. I'm not quite across whether you can do it um, online using video. Um, Mike, are you going to MC the questions for us or do you want us to do that? I'm, I'm happy to do that, Jordan. I'll just um, put a few that have come in so far. So I might just, I might just kick off if, uh, from the top. Um, we've had a, a couple of questions coming in. Um, 
uh, one of them was uh, about how uh, how Alda um, plans to take people along the uh, the journey and get as many people involved in, um, as possible uh, in this process. Um, so you want to field that one to start with, Jordan? Uh, I'll have a go. Yeah, um, part of it is doing this. So trying to uh, host webinars and organize some attention to these issues. Part of it is about hosting some of the forums where this is on the agenda. So the, um, the regional IGF, as an example, that we've brought to Brisbane at the end of the month. Um, the other is to keep talking about it through the media opportunities that we have. So we'll be using our blog um, to keep people apprised of what's going on with these uh, discussions and negotiations. Um, we're also part of a, a group of Australian internet governance stakeholders that have been starting to convene and coordinate this year, which we hope will continue to flourish and grow. Um, and we provide institutional support to, to the likes of um, the Net Thing event on a year, year after year basis. So that's some examples. Um, and in the work that we do, obviously we've had a bit of a focus on pulling this roadmap together um, in the past um, a few months. And now our focus definitely turns in our internet and governance and policy team to uh, being available to talk about this, um, to engage with people who are interested in the issues. So that's a few of the ways to answer that question. And Lucy, do you have anything further you want to add to that? Um, I think that about covers it, but just to reiterate that we are very happy to um, have conversations with people. We intend to be discussing these ideas and other ideas um, you know, as much as we can. Excellent. Um, we've had a question come in about um, uh, how the how the thinking aligns with um, other domain administrators such as uh, Internet NZ. Um, and uh, um, Jordan, I, I, you know, you, Jordan and Elise, I think you've both been consulting about this. So, um, any, uh, thoughts you want to share on views that we've received from uh, from other stakeholders and, and maybe those of um, other CCTLDs? What do you think, Annalise? You go first. Um, well, I think, you know, we have been discussing with a, a wide range of stakeholders, including other CCTLD managers, um, you, you know, a, a wide range of, of stakeholders from all stakeholder groups. Um, I, I wouldn't like to, and I don't know that anybody else has published their views and I wouldn't like to put my words in anybody else's mouth. Um, I would encourage uh, anyone who does have a view to, to make it publish public themselves. But um, Jordan, I'm not sure if you wanted to, to add anything. I'll go a tiny bit further in a non-attributable way, um, which is that some of the things that were said in the roadmap are, um, People are like, yeah, that's that's obvious. That makes sense. Other things, people said, ooh, that's interesting. Um, and uh, there seems to be particularly, um, ooh, that's interesting around the idea of a Net Mundial plus 10 event. Um, but how this aligns to other organizations, it's not our job, as Emily said, to, to speak on their behalf. I think there is a broad, um, there's a broad support for the multi-stakeholder model. And I think people we talk to generally would acknowledge um, more or less publicly, depending on where they sit, um, that it could be improved and needs to be um, adjusted and improved. So we don't run into a lot of um, people who think the whole thing needs to be torn down. We don't run into a lot of people who think that um, uh, everything is rosy. So I'll leave it at that. Thanks, Jordan. And I, I guess on a similar line to that um, about consultation, um, again, without being able to attribute um, anything, but we've had a question about whether uh, we're, um, we've spoken to Linux Australia um, and given that they might be interested in the free internet part of this. And um, uh, what, what I might just take that to be a question about sort of con you know, involvement with um, with the, the technical community uh, and uh, private sector organisations. Um, and uh, just ask sort of what, uh, what role we sort of see um, them playing going forward and and uh, whether whether there's a, a more of a role that they can play um, generally than uh, than they already have. Um, Annalise, did you want to talk about that? Um, well, I'll just talk to the Linux Australia bit first. I think we haven't. This is this is this is the launch of our our roadmap, so we haven't sort of spoken 
um, to Linux, I don't think, but uh, just to note that we do have NetThing um, on the 28th of August, which is Australia's uh, national uh, internet governance forum. I know Linux uh, has been an active participant in the past. So, um, but I, you know, this is the start of the conversation. Um, so if you think somebody is interested, feel free to share the, the link to the document because um, we are very keen to discuss with um, as many people as possible. Uh, and sorry, Mike, I think I, I sidetracked from a question, another question. What did you? Uh, I was more sort of touching on the, the technical community's role as well um, going forward and um, how that, uh, whether there's a greater role for the technical community than what they're already playing or, or whether um, whether there's uh, you know any any changes that we're proposing on that front. Um, well, just to to note that we, you know, we think that the technical stakeholders should be um, thinking about these issues and um, you know getting getting involved in the broader discussions. Um, yeah, we see the technical stakeholders as a, as a distinct. Uh, an important voice in these discussions. Excellent. We're, we're, still, we're definitely getting a theme of uh, of uh, suggestions and um, considerations for a wider consultation. And um, I'll just sort of segue into um, a question we've had about um, uh, meeting with uh, federal parliamentarians and informing them of the role of the uh, um, the benefits of the multi stakeholder model. Um, uh, I'm, I think. Uh, Annalise, we've been talking a lot about um, uh, you know the, the the role of governments and and multilateral um, organisation uh, multilateral processes, um, uh, and uh, I, I guess uh, I think the questions that are going to um, informing parliamentarians of the the benefits of the multi stakeholder model um, is there a um, uh, is there a rebalancing that you think that will need to happen between the multilateral processes? Um. I'm not, I'm not sure what you mean by rebalancing, but I think like these, these multilateral processes are happening um, and, you know, they're, they're going to happen sort of regardless of, of what happens sort of outside the, the multilateral framework. But um, I think it is important for the, for the uh, multi-stakeholder community to be paying attention to these and to be providing um uh, you know, contributions in advance. So like when we were talking about uh, Net Mundial earlier, um, that could be a, a, a way of having a multi-stakeholder contribution to some of these um, intergovernmental processes that are happening. Um, and, you know, the, the other point I would make on that is that, um, you know, we, we really need to make these multi-stakeholder institutions and processes um, you know, effective. They, they need to evolve because the internet has evolved and our, our use of the internet has evolved. Um, so, you know, the, the governance system needs to, to make sure that it can uh, deal with the challenges of a modern internet. And if, if we're not doing that, then that's sort of when we uh, see governments try and solve solve the problems um, through regulations and, and um, multilateral treaty. And if you have different uh, states implementing different legislation all across the place that sort of has a, a real impact on a on the um, interoperability of a of a global and interconnected uh, network so it, it is really important to make sure that we can find multi-stakeholder solutions um, and then when we're, where regulation you know is necessary because sometimes it is necessary that we have uh, some kind of um, you know platform or mechanism for for governments and the the technical stakeholders to be um, having you know open dialogue to make sure that the regulation doesn't have um, you know unintended consequences or flow on effects for people in a different jurisdiction. Um, and you know, just to to be all having the same conversation, I think is is important. Thanks, Annalise. And as I tried to paraphrase some quite long questions, a detailed questions which are coming in, which is a um, really good, just uh, also a challenge to process through them all. Um, we've had uh, um, a question come in about um, clarifying Outer's position in relation to new technologies um, that come under the AI umbrella, like. Uh, um, and 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 uh, social media platforms, um, and uh, the 
I guess the crux of the question is, do we suggest that the IGF framework of multi-stakeholder collaboration may be seen as a successful exemplar for future development governments across uh, related AI technologies? Um, Jordan, did you want to touch on that? Yeah, I'll try and pick up the pace a little as well, because we'd like to get through them all. Um, the short answer is the method, the multi-stakeholder method of bringing together the stakeholders who know about and are affected by the challenge uh, is important. And if that leads to a decisional institution, something new, that that could be useful. If it just leads to dialogues that share a stronger understanding, um, that could be useful as well. And I'm going to take a liberty of also answering um, a, an earlier question about what the main goal of the roadmap is, um, it, is it sort of connects. The point is to instigate discussion and to put some realistic and plausible things that could be done on the table. Um, to see how people feel about those ideas. And the follow on from it, if there's momentum behind them, is to participate in making the suggestions in the document happen. Um, success for us would look like um, either instigating debates and discussions that lead to a, a reform agenda that's either aligned with it or perhaps um, goes in a slightly different direction, but that has some community buy-in to it. So that's, that's how what we would see as success here. Thanks, Jordan. Um, Annalise, we've had a question about um, how ADA will uh, make future multi-stakeholder guidelines compatible uh, with any international guidelines, such as disputes over domain names and digital assets um, and uh, international trademarks, um, such as uh, through WIPO, um, and asking for our reaction on that. Um, I, I, it's a, a broad question, but I, I guess in terms of um, you know the, the roadmap and, and proposing changes. Um, there's a there'll be a number of challenges that we'll have to face. Um, uh, sort of, you know, with, with all these different fora that are out there, um, I don't really want to try and tackle that question in the various parts. Um, so well, we haven't sort of, you know, sort of the, the, the roadmap sort of addresses the international internet governance institutions. Um, but obviously, um, you know, ALDA is committed to multi-stakeholder and we will, um, sorry, I have the questions have moved from my screen. Uh, sorry, it was about WIPO. I was sort of regarding the compatibility of different uh, processes and, and guidelines um, and uh, how we'll make a, a future multi-stakeholder. Yeah. And at least I can I can take yep. that one if you like. Um, Tony, the the um, each country code domain designs its own policy framework. So um, Alda has responsibility for the .au domain. Um, if someone tried to lodge a, a dispute at EG WIPO or whatever, um, Alda would react by probably ignoring it. Um, Alda has its own dispute resolution policy that is based on um, the UDRP. Um, and that applies to .au domain names. So we, uh, we develop our policy and licensing rules um, by, in part by paying attention to what is going on regionally and globally, um, but it's based on the needs and interests of Australian users and consistent with Australian law. So that deals with that one. Easy. Um, thanks, Jordan. And um, we've uh, had a question as well about sort of what, the, what a non-multi-stakeholder outcome would look like. Um, for the internet governance space. And there are a number of um, different uh, processes that you, you touched on as well. Um, I guess it's, it's a, um, you know, what does the alternate look like and, uh, and you know, why are we trying to avoid it? Um, the, you know, there are, there are lots of ways that a non-multi-stakeholder outcome could be sort of put in place, but the, the crux of it is that, um, non-government stakeholders uh, wouldn't necessarily be involved in all of the discussions and decisions. Um, and so that's what we're, we're trying to avoid. Um, we, th we think it is really important to have all of those relevant voices involved in, in um, you know, problem solving. Um, so ultimately, it is, it is one where you know, non-government stakeholders might be able to participate, but if they have permission of governments, um, it, it's it's not guaranteed. I just add to that as well, Mike. Um, one of the concrete proposals, what it might look like, is in the Global Digital Compact um, policy brief that the UN Secretary General published in May, and that could involve the formation of a digital um, uh, cooperation forum, DCF, 
um, that probably would end up replacing the IGF. And um, the conversations about that and the UN documents talk about there being only three stakeholder groups, one of them being governments, one of them being um, the private sector, one of them being civil society. So whole categories of stakeholders, including the entire internet technical community are kind of abolished in that process. And it, it is the agenda of that forum that would be set by such a so-called tripartite forum. The forum itself, the people with a voice would be governments only. So that's one uh, possible future state that um, at least one powerful part of the UN system is advocating for digital governance issues. They say it would interact with existing internet governance institutions, um, but there's only so much time in the day and only so much energy in the stakeholder communities um, and attention that government's going to pay to these policy things. So it would be challenging to see a future where a digital cooperation forum like that and the open multi-stakeholder framework of the IGF were able to uh, live together. And our view has been that it's better to improve things like the IGF so they can deliver more of what is required um, rather than building new institutions that get rid of open participation. Thanks, Jordan. Um, and Annalise, we've uh, had a question about um, engaging with um, and getting buy-in from individual uh, domain owners and getting feedback. Um, that's obviously always a challenging process given how many how many there are and, and, and how distributed they are. Um, this, uh, this sort of go to the, the, the need for processes like it, like it I can that bring together broader cross sections of the community. And uh, you know, how are you know um, are we engaging well enough with individual domain owners as it is? Um so again, like we this is sort of our, our first putting out of the strategy. We would invite um domain owners to share share their views. Um Jordan, I'm not sure if you want to add anything further on that one. It's it's um I mean <sighs> We there are a lot of individual domain registrants in, in Australia alone. There are 4.3 million uh, .au domain names, more or less. Um, so we haven't um, formed a specific plan about outreach or encouraging people to go there. I, like this is not necessarily the best analogy, but it, um, someone once likened such an effort to being um, asking everyone who uses an electricity account to be interested in the regulation of the electricity uh, sector. Um, Obviously, power is more universal than domain names, unfortunately, at the moment. Um, please do get a domain name if you don't have one. Uh, but, uh, uh, you know, I think that's part of that mix is connection through the .au membership that ADA offers. 4,000 plus people have signed up for that. Um, and we keep those members um, apprised of our work through a weekly newsletter. Um, uh, you know, our, our, we we are a small organisation. We don't have direct contact with every Australian and with every registrant, um, but we are always pleased when people like that want to get involved in these dialogues. And uh, we're moving through the question queue well, so um, it should be uh, on time. But if you have any more questions, please put them in um, the Q and A tab. Um, and we've had. Uh, um, a question about sort of the deadline for action. Do, do we consider that there is a, a, a deadline that something needs to be done? Um, Annalise, did you want to start with that? I, I would say um, there, there is no time to lose uh, in, in thinking about these issues and, um, you know, sharing, sharing your views. Uh, these processes that we mentioned, like the GDC and the World Summit on the Information Society, while it might sound, um, you know, next year and the year after, it might seem like it's a long time away. Uh, the, the preparation for those processes and the um, agreements on outcomes um, um, among governments, uh, that all happens long before the, the, the um the conferences take place and the agreements are, are you know, eventually signed. So, uh, you know, for a process in 2024, governments will be starting to think about their positions and, and what, what is going to happen sort of now. So um, there's, there's, you know, really no time to lose in getting involved in these conversations and in the, the, the technical community, um, you know, developing uh, inputs into these. Um... To, to maybe just add on a little bit, um, 
governments will be meeting in New York in the middle of September for a ministerial meeting that's meant to chart the political direction for the summit of the future. Um, and the Global Digital Compact thread is one of the, I think, 11 pillars of the summit of the future. So um, Australian government officials will be there and participating without a doubt. So um, if you want to share initial views and have them influence Australia's positions in those conversations, literally the next couple of weeks is the time to do it. Um, and then the, the negotiations between countries that will shape what's in the final GDC are expected to start in the first quarter of next year and will be largely wrapped up by June. They, they tend to try and sort that stuff out before the summer, the New York summer break. And then the summit itself is planned at the moment for September next year. So uh, those are going to be um, a reality. Thanks, Jordan. Um, and uh, one of the penultimate questions I think we'll have is uh, um, how much of um, uh, the, the you know, any sort of proposed change can be built on uh, previous or existing multi-stakeholder um, structures? I think that's sort of going to um, some of the references you made, Annalise, about uh, Mundial and, and, um, and other fora that uh, happened in the past. Um, and how much we're sort of suggesting or, or, or putting out there might be able to be revived and, and how much might be new processes? Um, well, I think, you know, a starting point would be uh, to, to, to be looking at where we can um, make the existing processes and institutions um, able to more effectively deal with the, the policy development um, issues. But there are a whole range of new issues that don't really fit in those existing forums. So if we are sort of looking at new processes, um, you know, the, the uh, multi-stakeholder nature of the internet governance system um, does have, you know, a, a lot to, um, you know, to, to share with uh, or that could be applied to the so solving other problems, um, other digital problems. So things like, um, you know, AI, blockchain, they all, sh those issues should be discussed in a multi-stakeholder way and, and solutions being developed in a multi-stakeholder way for the, to deliver the best outcomes. Um, but the, you know, it, it's possible that we will need new institutions and new processes. Um, so we can, build on the existing principles of multi-stakeholder or apply the existing principles of multi-stakeholder um, uh, policy development to those new issues. Uh, but as Jordan mentioned earlier, you know, we, we wouldn't want to see um, you know, things like AI and blockchain brought into some of the existing uh, decision-making bodies. Right, Jordan, do you have anything else you wanted to add to that one? No, all good. Um, well, given the time, we might. Um, there, there was one question from uh, from Lisa about which ministers we should write to, um, and uh, I, I think the answer to that is is as many as many as uh, are possible, given the um, broad spectrum of digital engagement across government now. But um, of course, the you know, communications minister um, that uh, um, Outa deals with regularly, um, and. Uh, um, various other ministers in government are all, all being involved in different aspects of that at the moment. So, um, yeah, I guess the answer to that one, Lisa, is, is there, there are quite a few now, um, and uh, as many as possible should be engaged with. Um, but with that, I think we might move to wrap up. Um, and as Jordan mentioned earlier, um, we've got a few upcoming events uh, to flag. Um, if I just share my screen again, hopefully put the right screen up there. Um, of course, the discussion will continue uh, going forward at uh, uh, both NetThing, which is Australia's Internet Governance Forum uh, that's happening in Brisbane and online uh, on the 28th of August. Um, and uh, of course, the Asia Pacific Regional Internet Governance Forum, uh, which is happening in Brisbane on the 29th to 31st of August. Alongside those events, um, as Jordan mentioned, we're uh, um, co-hosting, uh, uh, we're hosting and co-locating the uh, Pacific Internet Governance Forum that will run on the 28th and the 29th of, of August. And uh, the UN uh, has organised a, a parliamentary track uh, on uh, the 31st and the 1st of uh, September. So for information, all those events um, are available on our website. Uh, we encourage you to register and, uh, and uh, either attend in person or online if you can. Um, and of course, to stay up to date on 
uh, developments in the in the .au space and, and other events like this. So I do encourage you to sign up as a .au member if you haven't already. Um, and uh, you can also do that on Outer's website. Um, so thank you again for, for joining us um, and uh, for, launching, for helping us launch this roadmap. And we look forward to your feedback. Thanks, everyone. Thanks.